Hello, dear friend. Thomas Manton IV here. Coming to you live. It's uh, after midnight where I am. I began this glorious day at 6 a.m., the local time where I am here now. And the Lord started speaking to me a new prophecy for the state of Missouri in the United States. And but this is a, a, a prophetic message for the entire body of Christ at large, I believe across the United States and around the world. It's a, going to be a role model of a movement that's about to happen. And the Lord spoke to me so clearly, very lengthy, so I'm going to try to read it. Coming on here, just try to get through this at this late hour. I've been traveling without sleep around the clock about two days. And uh, someone said, get some rest, prophet. And I thought, I'm all right. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on my assignment. To, so I'm fine and I'll be fine. But uh, this is a lengthy word. It's several pages long. I typed it with my stylus myself on the flights starting at 6.56 a.m on this morning of uh, May 16th, 2019, which is a Thursday. Now I'm into Friday morning, and on the East Coast, it's even later. But uh, here we are in a great, great, great conference here. And the Lord spoke to bring this model of what he wants to do in the kingdom, which is apostolic and prophetic and very, very weighty, okay? Okay. So I'm going to read through this. I don't normally do that very much, but I just want to read it to you the way God gave it to me and the way I typed it with my own pen. Okay, on my device. So word by word, you see a little bit of it there. I don't know if you can see the, you can see the text a little bit. It's kind of, why is it whiting out like that? There you go. Lighting, lighting is such a thing. Okay, you see 6.56 a.m., it's backwards, but it goes way, way, way down. And I just wanted to give you that as a reference point. Also, before I... So I absolutely don't forget this. Because I can get so caught up, I could just not remember to do this. But I have a book that I've just printed again, reprinted, called The Benefits of Excellence. They're on the table here in the conference. Right now, you get a special along with my great message on the Power to Create Wealth on DVD and the Benefits of Excellence book, which is just brilliant. Uh, let me read you just one key from here. Uh, number 17, your mentality. The Benefits of Excellence, okay? You will progress faster by operating in good, aggressive warfare if you will lose the religious cliches and God is always in control mentality. And it goes on and on. But and basically, our decisions determine our destiny. And, you know, we need to decide what kind of life we want to have uh, because God will allow what you decide to do. And there's so many others in here. There's 40, 40 keys in here for diamond keys for your success and prosperity. We called it, and this is from a conference I did in Nigeria. And the message there, uh, many messages we did, but this is one really key one. The power to create wealth. The substantive revelation, knowledge, and teaching that's in this DVD and this book together will absolutely rock your world and revolutionize your world. And they're both available now for a love gift of only $20. If I need to ship it to you, please add $5 for the shipping and handling. Normally, this would be a $30 value uh, plus $5 shipping and handling. Please... You can have it right now for a love gift of only $20. If, you, if I need to mail it to you, I'll be glad to do it. Just add $5 for the shipping and handling, please. And for $25, you have both of these. It should be $25,000. I'm not trying to be funny, but you know the revelation in here will absolutely change your life. There's one woman who read one of my books and said uh, she just was so convicted by the Spirit of God, she couldn't live in the village anymore, the ghetto kind of area, you know, anymore. She had to move into the big city, get a big house, and God blessed her, and she did that. Based on the decision, the decision, the new life decision she made by reading one of my books. The value of a changed life, what good is that? So I want to, I want to give this to you, this is so powerful. Okay. 
All right, here we go. 6.56 a.m., 5.16.19, which is May 16, 2019, Thursday morning. And I was on the East Coast just when I sat in my seat on the plane about a couple of minutes into the, uh, you know, me being there before we even took off. The Lord started to speak to me. And I thought, wow, I heard it so loud and so clear. It's amazing the way God speaks. And I began to type. And here's the word of the Lord. Here's the word of the Lord. The Lord started speaking to me about the state of Missouri and also with a specific reference to the Springfield, Missouri region. And he said this will also be a new and detailed prophecy, as I said, like a role model and a a model of a movement for the for the body of Christ at large. He said, I will cause the high to come lower in their heart attitude toward others. And I will cause men and women who feel they are in lower estates to now think more highly of themselves as they also think well about others. And this is kind of a leveling off thing, a leveling thing, you know. Welcome all you that are coming on. The Lord bless you and I'm glad you're here. It's quite a lengthy a document I have to read here, so I want to just go right through it. So I, I, I saw this where there'd be a leveling off that, that I remember, I'm reminded of the scripture that says that the, the, the wise one said, Lord, lead me in a level path. People are going to begin to level off together and people are going to begin to cooperate in unity and work together. And somebody could say, this is impossible. We've never seen it happen. But the Lord says with me, all things are possible, aren't they? So I, this is a, a movement that I'm going to make happen. And this is, again, the creative word of the Lord, a, pro, a prophecy from heaven that he gave to moi, his prophet, to speak this to you and to the world. And particularly also to the state and to America and beyond. He said, then, I will release a new move of my spirit that will produce more unity in the body of Christ. I will cause the high to come lower in their heart attitude toward others. And I will cause those that are feeling low in lower states to now think higher of themselves as they also think well about others. This is love really one toward another. You know, it's not far fetched because Jesus says you'll know men will know that you're my disciples because you have love one for another. He says this will begin a new day now where tremendous unity will begin to be accomplished in the region and beyond. This region will be a, a prototype of this, and we found an apostle. God arranged for me to meet a great apostle and other leaders, other apostles and other prophets, and to, to have this thing begin to come together. It's very amazing, and it's going to absolutely explode. In fact, the apostolic ministry, uh, the host here was telling me that he, he, and then the Lord had me prophesy over them tonight in the meeting uh, something different. And, but the Lord was talking about the apostolic office. And he says, well, I have the church, but I'm seeing where I'm raising up my son and others right now. And they're going to be able to handle a lot of the day-to-day -day of that. And I'll begin to be able to devote more energy to the apostolic thing because he's gonna, he, the Lord said he's, they're going to be fathers, a father and mother to many, many people. Phenomenal. And when you have a genuine person that fits the bill, the high call that God has for us to love one another, oh my, then you have a match made in heaven to bless a lot of people. And a lot of people are not like that. You know, religious people can be cruel. Uh, people that are carnal and in their own games or whatever, they can be very cruel people, you know. That's not the spirit of God. I mean, you got a question of somebody that uh, you know, acts evil and wicked if they really know God. Maybe they don't. But the Lord said further here in the prophecy, he said, I don't want you to worry about them. I want you to think about the good thing and press on toward the positive. And I'll bless you in that. Let me continue reading. He said, it'll go so far for good and better that it will become known as a phenomenon, this thing that I'm about to do, says the Lord. This unity and community mentality of brotherhood will end up being recognized elsewhere as a role model 
of something that I greatly want to take place in my body all around the world. And the Lord then said, unity, 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 three times. And yes, says the Lord, I want this now. I want unity. I want love and compassion to, fro to flow freely. I want my disciples to be known again for having genuine love for one another. The scripture comes to mind about men walking on a level path. I mentioned that. The verse said, Lord, lead me on a level path. I believe people should walk together. And the Bible also says further, how can two walk together except they be agreed? And he says, a level path together. My true chosen vessels, he went on to say, will begin to feel this and receive this from me and walk this out, says the Lord. I want my own to lead as examples and manifestors, good word there, of my love. I want movements of my spirit to flow through many ministries and with this phenomenon of expression that all are one, that they all become as one. This could not seem even like an impossible task. It could seem even like an impossible task, yes. But it's not, says the Lord. I even want ministries and churches to help each other. Imagine that. Help each other how? By loving each other, you know, supporting each other. Counting each other, honoring each other, counting other, others as they have something valuable. And it's not just you all the time. It's, it's others, too, all working together. Isn't that wonderful? That's what, that's what we're supposed to be doing all along, but too rare. But the Lord said he's going to do it here and he's going to do it in many other places. This is a movement of heaven on the earth. He said, I want people to be manifestors of my love. He said, I want movements of my spirit to flow through many ministries. And with this phenomenon of expression, phenomenal expression, yeah. Love one toward another. Unity, compassion, help, consolation, loving each other, having genuine care for each other, helping each other, advance the kingdom. Powerful. He said, I even want ministries and churches to help each other. He says, I want my people to get a community mentality. I want my people to feel safe with each other. Oh, wow. You can hardly feel safe sharing things with other people. I, I, I tell you, sometimes you got to watch what you say in the company of certain people. You don't know where they're going to go with it. You don't know how much you could trust them. They could smile at you, but they're really, you know. People can be weird, you know? It's not sad, but it's the case too often. I want my people to feel safe with each other. Another seemingly impossible task, one might say. But it is actually possible, says the Lord. I can help you make this a reality by the movements of my spirit in and through all of you. The designations and functionalities of brother and sister come before ministry titles in my mind, says the Lord. The designations and functionalities of brother and sister to each other. In my church, in my movement, come before ministry titles in my mind, says the Lord, in my mind. And he said, I want you all to actually feel the benefits of another success. To feel the benefit of another success. And somebody might say, well, what does another's one success have to do with me? What does someone else's success have to do with me? But in reality, everyone succeeds when others succeed. See, people don't think like that. It's all about me, me, my, what is in it for me, you know, which is, which is good. You got to have something in it for you, everything that you're going to do. But when others succeed, the body gets built up. Now the generation of things get done. And in the synchronicity of people connected together, working together, now things begin to bloom and blossom and it's, it becomes then easier for everyone it becomes more easier for everyone 
when one succeeds, another is succeeding. You know, remember the scripture also said, when one is hurting in the body, it affects the whole body. So in reality, when someone else succeeds, we also succeed. It is then when people have more to share, uh, more can get done. And that's not only regarding money, but it's also regarding my kingdom expansion getting done on many fronts, the Lord said. He went on to say further, unity is a major key to revival, touching many more people. Unity leads to ultimate cooperation and this then ultimate success. Giving in many different capacities also works as seed for you who work in my vineyard. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians 6, 8, that whatever good thing one does for another, regardless of their current lot in life, high or low, whatever it is, I will then bless the giver back in multiplied blessings. So when you do good for another, God will do good for you, do something good for you. But also you got to watch out because it works the other thing. What a man, whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You do bad, if you do bad for another, to another, then bad can come back to you. So you need to be careful. I need somebody to take this document and make this into number points. The point one by one and make this like easily in point, 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 point. Maybe it'll be like 50 prophecies, 50, 60 points here and just pow, rocket fire, and it could be preached, it could be shared, I, I tell you, we're gonna get it done. Make it into a little book. So you cannot do good and not get blessed, the Lord said. The Lord said, remember this always, you cannot do good and not get blessed. You also cannot do bad and not have consequence to that, so you need to be careful what you're doing. He said, in one way or another, you'll be getting blessed by doing good for somebody else. This is my divine law. That's what the Lord said to me. He said, thus you should all look for ways to bless others. And so even every single day as you can, as God will enable you. He said, it'll pay great dividends and release multiplied blessings for you. Remember, I had my servant King Solomon write, says the Lord, in Proverbs eleven twenty five that a generous person would in turn become a well-watered garden themselves. A generous person will in turn become like a well-watered garden themselves. I also said in Luke 6, 38, that as you give, multiplied harvest was, would then be coming back to you and being released unto you. Wow, it's powerful. So we need to learn that principle of honoring each other, sowing, helping each other. Are you seeing this? And unity, cooperation, the true disciples showing love one for another. You know, this is, this is how the kingdom gets advanced and everybody benefits by that. Next, I saw the miraculous flowing. I saw more miracles happening. I saw more healings happening. I saw more deliverances taking place. I saw the oasis of, of God's presence, you know, just flowing through ministries and churches and good people and, and people getting healed and delivered. And uh, the apostle here gave a word tonight and he's talked about um, there's an effect that happens where healing could happen in a certain realm of something that gets built as a state of being, you know, like where the presence of God is, there's liberty, the Bible says. And I saw it like when there's, when there's gonna be a revival, like a visitation that becomes a habitation. The visitation must become a habitation and then people can just get in that zone and get healed. And then the, the, the extraneous work of human effort is no longer needed because people are just getting healed without someone's hands. They're just getting, uh, you know, cleansed through being in the presence of God that comes through cooperation with different believers and where the glory is at. Remember I, the book of Acts talked about, and this is all a prophetic message here. You get it. I'm just flowing here and then I'm reading this too and it's all going together. Now, the book of Acts uh, had the people working together and they had all things in common and the glory was there 
and evangelism happened, thousands got saved, miracles happened, the dead were raised, people gave phenomenal offerings, and those that didn't drop dead, or those that played with it, you know. Not that those that didn't give, but those that tried to lie to the Holy Ghost, you know. The glory was so strong, they couldn't do all that. Be okay, like in a lot of churches today. I saw the miraculous flowing, and also throughout the world, not just in one place, but a move of the miraculous is coming. That speaks for itself. Next, I saw government officials getting saved. I saw a vision of that. On the plane while I was flying, government officials getting saved, and many also become, many of them becoming radical for Christ. Radical soldiers, radical disciples, radical government leaders on fire for God, working in their respective government assignments and being full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Next, I saw another vision. I saw churches being filled up with more and more new people. Now, how's that going to happen? Because there's going to be like offspring produced, you know, by people evangelizing and by people getting other people delivered. And then people are going to be happy about joining up in the things of God. And then they're going to come and they're going to bring other people. And it's going to, the growth will keep reproducing itself because God is in the midst. That is coming. Get ready for it now in Jesus' name. Next, I will cause evangelism to rise up to epic proportions across the land, the Lord said. And, and people then also said, is this, isn't, this, isn't this seemingly impossible? How is this going to happen? But the Lord said, yes, it's not only possible, but with me it will happen. And remember that all good things are always possible with me when I am moving in your midst. Next, he says, I'll now raise many... I'll now raise many of my people to begin to walk in crazy, radical faith. And he said, this day will begin to be known as the day of the radicals. Next, the Lord began to talk about business. He said, I will begin to bless my people in greater ways now, much greater ways, with new and increasing favor. He says, I've watched and observed the faithful and I will bless them mightily, says the Lord. But there are also those that I will quickly raise up now also to begin to prosper in great and magnanimous ways. There are some that I have specifically chosen, specially chosen, to become wealthy in business as entrepreneurs for the purpose of empowering ministries and advancing my kingdom. The Lord said, I want big money and big commerce to flow in my houses and in and through the houses of the anointed and gifted business people. Indeed, let it, let it be done, Lord, in Jesus' name. I heard the Lord say also the word franchises. That was unusual. But some people may not have, you know, to reinvent the wheel. The wheel within the wheel is already made and spinning because someone else created a system where people can prosper. But man, in a franchise, you have to work hard. You have to work smart. You have to run a lot of numbers, but there are going to be people that have the, will have the grace to do that and have franchise businesses. Many people, not just people looking for a job or working a job, they're going to be the job giver. They're going to be the job maker. They're going to be the entrepreneur making serious money. That's going to happen here. And, and everywhere beyond, in Jesus' name. He said, I'll, I'll, do, I'll have people have, get franchises and work in them in addition to several other people birthing and working in other types of flourishing businesses. The faithful and the elect and the gifted and the anointed people will now soar to greater heights. And he said, the word of the Lord is now saying that he will help many to become prosperous and wealthy. And this is the will of God for you and for me. And, I, and you're looking at a blessed man right now, by the way. I want my people to get aggressive in all that matters. I do not want people to sit back, stay quiet or calm and subdued or be shy or timid. I also don't want my people to be ignorant of the enemy's devices, nor of my own methods and devices, how I work, says the Lord. 
I want my people to be very sharp and learned and passionate and aggressive about my laws and principles. I want my Zion people, yeah, my Zion of believers to wake up and to get on strongly about advancing my kingdom now. Remember Isaiah 52. Awake, O Zion. Awake you that slumbers and sleeps. Wake up and get busy and get on with the Father's business. I want people moving and in, in, in advancing my kingdom now. Unity, love, fellowship, evangelism, economics, empowerment, business success. Just some key words of activation for all of you. Unity, love, fellowship, evangelism, economics, economic empowerment, empowerment in other ways too, business and success. These are great key words of activation for all of you. Then the Lord says, your enemies are my enemies. I will fight for you now in greater dimensions as your faith and boldness and passion rises to higher heights, says the Lord. Many of my people have suffered terrible setbacks and attacks and unfortunate setbacks because of the evil devices of the devil and his wicked friends. I always say the devil and his ugly friends. Yeah, they're ugly. Don't you know it? But again, I say now I will fight for you, declares the Lord. I will revive you. I will reactivate you. I will refine you further. I will heal you. I will restore you. I will reform and transform your lives now for the much, much better in all good things, says the Lord. Study my word. Get more intimate with the Holy Spirit. Listen for his voice. Hear even his whispers. Follow his counsel and his guidance. It is my spirit who will lead you and guide you into all truth and greater knowledge of me. Listen for my instructions, for I will speak to you and even through you in various ways. The time is now, my friends. I'm saying that, but the Lord is saying, time is now, my people, for you to rise up in boldness and in power, O precious one of the Lord. You will know me so much more intimately in the days to come. You will know my plan. You will know my will beyond any shadow of any doubt. You are not like the religious ones that don't really even know me. Knowing a little about me is not truly knowing me. Notice I said a little. Someone thinks they know the gospel plan, they know the scriptures and all that. You think you know God, the vast creator? You know all about him? No, you don't. Even we who are walking with him don't even know that much really about God. Paul said uh, that I may know him in the fellowship of his sufferings and the power of his resurrection. He said, oh, that I might know him. Imagine, Paul, 30 years moving in revival and was the one who was the revelator to bring the word to the church from heaven. And he was really been saying, do I really know him enough? So people that act foolish really don't know him hardly at all, if at all. The Lord said, I have my own remnant that I will raise up to do and perform so many great exploits. But as for the others that don't even really know me, they are not my messengers. They are not my servants. And the Lord said, leave the religious and shallow people to their own things. But you who are truly mine, it is time now for you to move forcefully forward in conquest and, and in taking spoils, says the Lord. Never allow any distractions to deter you from all of the wonderful things I have for you. Never allow your focus on my assignments to be broken. Keep looking straight ahead. Forget what was and whatever has been that has hindered you or caused you any pain and adversity. He says, I will deal with your enemies. This is my promise to you, says the Lord. Know this, the enemies known in re religiosity, ignorance, political liberalism. Oh, yeah. And the idiocies of poverty and non-action and non-movement are some of the enemies that you may have seen be very prevalent before. But the Lord says, I don't want you to focus on these, these idiocies and wrong things. I want you to focus on me. And I want you to focus on what I am saying and what I am doing. And know this, the Lord said, I have already given you power and authority over all of them. And you can crush the operations of the devil and his wrongly influenced friends in the power of my spirit, says the Lord. 
And I say to you now that I never want you to be distracted nor discouraged, my precious ones, by any evil forces, not even for a minute. As you choose to continually walk in my power and authority, you're going to see my blessings. The best revenge, the Lord said, against anything that causes you failure is your success. I want to say that again. The best revenge against anything that causes you failure is your success. Remember, it is I, the Lord, who said that vengeance belongs to me. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord, and I will repay and judge evildoers that work to harm you. And a vital way that I revenge for you is by bringing you into great and then even greater success and successes. Wow. So make the decision to focus on my assignments now in greater measures and greater ways, says the Lord. Make the decision to do that and get seriously and fiercely functional in working strongly and brilliantly in all of what I have specifically called and ordained and gifted and anointed you to do now. He said, I will bless and reward you greatly, my precious chosen and elect sons and daughters, for being willing, obedient, and diligent in that which I have chosen for you to do. So decide now to give yourselves fully to me, says the Lord. Renew your vows to me now, saying that you, have, you will serve me with passion all the days of your lives, and I will grant you long and powerfully productive lives as you serve me diligently and brilliantly with all of your hearts, minds, and strength, says the Lord. It is a new day now. It is a new season now. I declare the next chapters and volumes of your lives are now open to you. Get into all that I have planned for you, says the Lord, because it is both good and great of, for you know, what I'm about to do. Win the lost, he said. Heal the sick. Help people to prosper. Live according to Third John 2, 3 and 4, where it says, I have no greater joy, John said, to see that my children walk in truth. And beloved, I want you to prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. I want you to prosper and be wealthy. I want you to be healed and be healthy. I want you to have the most productive minds. Oh, yes. All according to 3 John 2. To four. I, I, I had my apostle Paul write this. We have the mind of Christ. Amen. So more later, friends, as the Lord decides to speak further on all these things, I am faithfully his for the miraculous and yours for the breakthrough. Prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV. And that is just a part of it. That's a part of it. So we're going we're gonna to print this. We're going to get this out. And it's going to be point by point, as many points as there are. But the Lord was speaking about uh, some of the emphases here are where um, unity, love for one another, business development, economic development, economic empowerment, uh, apostolic, you know, horizontal, you know, loving each other, horizontal people to people evangelism people working with each other, people uh, humbling themselves to think like God thinks about other people, and people that feel like they're less than someone else because they're maybe not as successful in a certain arena, they can get their mindset raised up, you know, to, uh, you know, think higher of themselves, but uh, nobody's ever supposed to think more highly of themselves than they ought to. And those that think too highly of themselves, God's going to begin to work on chopping some things, you know, scaling and grading, grading some things to soften the edges that everyone can begin to walk together in unity and power. And the ultimate summation of all of this is success in everybody's life. And then everybody succeeds because the other succeeds. When you have a community and brotherhood and sisterhood, you know, community of successful people, hey, Everybody's blessed. Everybody's doing well. Everybody's happy. Everybody's flourishing. And people will have their problems and issues that need to be prayed through and gotten through, of course. But uh, we live in this crazy, evil world. Well, it's God's world, but the devil's in it, and a lot of evil people. 
So, you know, you have to deal with Jesus said, you'll have tribulation in this world, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. John 16, And, you know, the, the power of the Spirit coming through this. John 6, Jesus said, these words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And they are life-giving. Some funny analogy, I, I just will add this in. I want to do another little separate piece of a broadcast on this, but let me say it while I'm in it, because I got I to go. Uh, I have a full day tomorrow. Many sessions, and I'm feeling a little bit, you know. But anyway, we're making it. So I've been going a couple of days without sleep around the clock, time zones, flying in the air, traveling in meetings today, and then now it's uh, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. on the East Coast. And this whole thing started this morning early, 18 hours ago, 19 hours ago, at six in the 6 a.m. hour. Hadn't slept, was already at the airport at 5-something in the morning. <laughs> and then got on the plane, and the Lord started to talk to me, this lengthy thing here. So, uh, but I, I saw a sign, uh, and, and this will bless you. It's a bit amusing, too. I saw a sign with a woman. She says, I love gold. Wish I had that somewhere. Let me see if I can, while I'm talking. I love gold. And she, there was a heart there, and she was kissing a big bar of gold, you know, like in her hand. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. So as I was driving, I took a snap of it, and I got it, and I just was able to frame out the picture of that. I think I can find it, eh? Okay, here it is. I got it. This is really amazing. Look at that. I, I see if I can get it. I'm reflecting back on the. Okay, there it is. I love gold. You see that? A woman kissing a bar of gold. Now that's cool. And then I, I began to ponder and think about this afterwards. I thought, gold. I think about. I love God. I love God, but then there's an the L in there, which makes the word gold. And I thought, what, is the, what can the L stand for? Gold, that's what he called it. God said he made the gold and it was good. And that's another word that we get in the similarity to the word God is good. G-O-O-D and G-O-D, and then you take one letter off, uh, G-O-D, and you get go. And then you take, add another letter, L, and you get gold. And I thought, the gold is good for us. God, gold, good. <laughs> and I thought, wait, wait a minute now, what can L stand for? And it just popped up in my mind. I feel the anointing right now. I thought I was tired, but I'm getting, I'm getting, in, I'm getting a, a second for a wind blowing here. Lord, have mercy. And I thought L stands for living, to live, life, live, living, life, live, living. In the middle of God, G-O-L-D, gold. So I love gold. Oh, no, people say, well, really? Yeah, I love everything good that God has made because we have use for it. So the gold is for good living. So what's the point? God wants you to prosper. He wants you to own resources. He wants you to own real estate. He wants you to have land. He wants you to have property. He wants you to have buildings. He wants you to have vehicles. He wants you to have beautiful houses. He wants you to have the best of the best of everything. Why? So you can, you know... Be able to produce more to advance his kingdom. And the Lord said in the prophecy there that he was even causing people to go into business. I have an anointing in this, in this arena, and I want to release this fire of grace upon you. That you can uh, prosper in business for the purpose of advancing the kingdom, but you could also advance your own kingdom. Your own house can be blessed, you know, that you can have uh, what you want, and you could also empower others to bring the gospel around the world when you're blessed. So the gold and the silver is mine, says the Lord. The treasure is mine. And I want my house to be places of wealth, commerce, community, funding, blessing. All of those things. Are you seeing this? And people to also to love each other, to be friendly with each other to favor each other, to honor each other, and everyone to humble themselves, to think highly of another and really care about another person's well-being. And then on the financial note, when you have finance, you can do all of that. 
So there's a seed to sow for some level of honorable breakthrough. And you could do that on thomasmanton.com and become a partner with me and sow into this ministry that's carrying the presence of the prophetic glory and the prophetic mantle and the prophetic word to the nations of the world and your city and your state right here and right now. That there is just something that's about to happen. The Lord spoke to me. I was uh, on uh, Wednesday afternoon, which was yesterday. Well, now it's Friday, but so a day and a half. Thursday all day, I've been getting this in this conference, meeting, traveling. And then the day before, on Wednesday afternoon, the Lord gave me this word. The time is now. It's a prophetic message. If you've seen it already, great. Or you can go back and replay it or watch it again. Or watch it for the first time and share that with your friends also. The Lord was saying the time is now to get busy and to rise up to advance the kingdom and stop waiting for something like, you know, stop wasting time. Stop gazing and marveling at everyone else. You're the one. You're supposed to be doing something right now. Something very powerful. So I want to pray a harvest that God will unlock acceleration and favor and new open doors. Flourishing provision. And people to help you. Those four things I want to pray. As you partner with me in this great work of God that we're doing. So you can connect as the Spirit of the Lord leads you. Click on thomasmanton.com. You'll see some information there. And there'll be some uh, notes in the comments here on the screen. By some of our friends putting in. And you can connect with this ministry. I'm praying for you right now. That unity amongst the brethren humility, love and compassion, but also of abundant blessings for you to just be blessed and successful in everything that your heart's desiring and every, for everything that God wants you to do and accomplish. And I believe that day is right now. It's happening in greater measures. So I'm Thomas Manton IV. I love you. I'm praying for you. Let's remember the words of our great, great, great uh, ancestor and the prophetic, the prophet Isaiah. When he said in Isaiah 48, 17, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. So you have a prophet here, moi, Dr. TM4, who will help you to profit. The P-R-O-P-H-E-T to help you with the P-R-O-F-I-T, profit. And you need that and you want that. And you've been... Searching far and wide and thinking about who can really talk to me about this and pray for me about economics and also about, you know, having revival and really, 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 you know, moving in the power of the Holy Spirit, moving in the miraculous, seeing society change. Well, you need to be blessed to be a blessing and be and have a part uh, in, in all of that moving. And as you... Um, as you begin to walk in all of that, you're going to see God's new favor in hand. And the time is now for that. Now, again, the book, The Benefits of Excellence, along with this message, this is powerful. And this will help you, this teaching. Live DVD, it's over and it's more than an hour long. Uh, short, but long. Long, but short. Uh, on the power to create wealth, you need the information that's in here. So... When you're partnering with the ministry on whatever level God is talking to you about doing, uh, to sow a seed into our work, I want to make sure I get these to you as a gift from me to you, from the heart of God through me to you. And I'm praying that God's going to really raise you up and make you just a great minister of his, a great lover of people, a great kingdom advancer, and let it be done now in Jesus' name. The time is now. I love you. And I'll talk to you more on the next broadcast. Praying for you. I'm looking to hear from you. Get in touch. In Jesus' name. Share this message. Share this message. And you can replay as often as you want. And share it with others. The Lord bless you. I love you. Talk to you again soon.